Social media is one giant video game, and if you're a Twitch streamer, you're probably not winning as much as you could be. Forget about downloading flat, low-quality clips or VODs from Twitch. By the end of this video, you'll have OBS set up to capture amazing vertical moments with a single hotkey, complete with isolated audio and polished visuals that are ready for easy editing. Most streamers are stuck with whatever comes out of their Twitch VODs or clips, but we're going to do something completely different. I'm going to walk you through building a professional vertical recording setup that runs alongside your stream, capturing everything in real time with full control over your audio, visuals and quality. So let's get started. Before you start configuring, we're going to need to grab two essential OBS plugins that I've linked down below. Atom Vertical, which is the backbone of your vertical setup, and Source Clone to easily duplicate sources and apply effects to just the clone. Once those are installed, restart OBS and you should see a new vertical canvas preview alongside some docs titled Vertical Scenes and Vertical Sources. If not, just come up to the Docs menu in OBS and make sure that these three vertical docs are enabled. I'd also recommend toggling on full height docs so that our vertical canvas can take take up the full height of OBS. Next, let's add our core game capture and camera sources. Come down to the vertical sources dock and add a game capture source. If you already have a horizontal camera setup for streaming to Twitch or YouTube, then you can select your existing game capture source, but if not, just add a new game capture source instead. Now, do the exact same thing for your camera source by adding a video capture device and selecting either your existing camera source or adding a new one. Next, we want to arrange our camera and game capture sources on the vertical canvas by dragging and resizing them to fit this 1080 by 1920 frame. You can right click on any source, go to transform and center horizontally to get things in the middle. A common layout is camera at the top with gameplay filling the remaining space, but feel free to get creative. TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels all overlay their own buttons, text, and icons on top of your videos. You need to make sure that your face or any critical gameplay elements aren't hidden behind a like button or a profile picture. To solve this, I've created a free safe zone toolkit for you on my website, which I've linked down below. Here you'll find two different ways to make sure that your layout is perfect. First, there's a drag and drop tool where you can quickly test any existing video against the overlays. This is great for checking clips that you've already made before posting them onto social media. Second, and what we'll be using right now to design our live scene, you can download the overlay images themselves to use directly inside OBS. I'll do my best to keep both the tool and the downloadable images updated if the platform UI has changed significantly. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the images, in your vertical sources, add an image source. Browse to the downloaded safe zone overlay files and select one. Since they're already 1080 by 1920 in that vertical format, they should fit perfectly. Now check to make sure that your camera placement or any important game elements all fall within this safe zone area away from the platform UI zones. You can click this little lock icon on the image source so that you don't accidentally move it when you're repositioning your other sources. Feel free to add the other two safe zones if you're posting to those platforms too. Once you're happy with the positioning, you can just hide the overlays by clicking the little eye icon Remember, you don't actually want these overlays recorded into your videos. Now, what exactly are masks? Think of them like stencils for your OBS sources. These are typically black and white images where white shows the underlying source and black hides it. You can use masks to give your camera a cool shape rather than just a rectangle, or you can use masks to selectively display certain elements of your game's HUD or UI that would normally be cut off in this vertical format. Your mini map, health bar, kill feed, we can overlay those elements by cutting them out using masks. Now, masks may sound complicated, but they're actually really easy easy to make. You can use basically any image editing software like Photoshop, Affinity Photo, GIMP, or even a free browser tool like Photopia. Is it Photopia? Photopi? Photop? Since Photopia is free and available to everyone, let's use that. First, take a clear screenshot of your game of choice with all of those different UI elements that you might want visible. Go to photopia.com and drag your screenshot onto the canvas. Next, use the pen tool to carefully trace around a UI element that you want to potentially show, such as the minimap, health, ammo, or kill feed. You can zoom in to get really specific here. Make sure that you complete the path and then click on Make Shape. In the color picker, choose white as the color and press OK. And that's it. If you want to mask out multiple different elements, make sure that you select your background layer again and then just repeat the process. Use the pen tool, trace around the UI, click on make shape and fill it white. Once you've created all the different UI element shapes you need, 
you can hide the original game screenshot layer. You should now see multiple white UI shapes on a transparent background. Go up to File, Export As, PNG, and save this file to your computer. Now, back in OBS, you'll need to create an independent clone of your game capture source specifically for these UI elements. Then we'll have one source for our gameplay and one clone source for our overlaid game UI. This is why we installed the Source Clone plugin at the beginning. A clone is just an independent copy that we can mess with freely, leaving the original untouched. To do that, go to Add, Source Clone, New, and select your existing game capture source. You can uncheck audio here since we don't actually need any audio from this. Once it's added, let's rename it just to keep things organized. Then we can right click the clone source, go to Filters, add an Image Mask Blend filter and browse to select the file you just created. Now hopefully you should see that only the parts of the game corresponding to those white shapes you created are visible on this source clone. This masked clone now contains all of your different UI elements, but you'll likely just want to display them individually. Let's say you want to show the health bar first. Simple hold down the Alt key on your keyboard while dragging to crop the source. You can then resize and position just the health bar elements anywhere you want on your vertical canvas. To add another element, simply just add the clone source again by going to Add, Source Clone, and choosing the game clone you just renamed. This already has the mask applied to it, so you can then just crop it to show just the new element. If you want to keep pushing your design further, feel free to add a drop shadow to this game element source, blurred backgrounds to your canvas, or even a mask to your camera to give it a cool shape rather than just a boring rectangle. I'll add some more links down in the description if you want to do any of those. And remember to check your safe zones by enabling the overlay. You might need to move the image source up to the top of your vertical sources so that it's overlaid on top. And now that you've set this up, you'll never need to do it again, saving you hours in the edit later on. All of those useful UI elements from the game will be in every single clip you create from your stream with zero editing. Okay, let's take a breath. That's the entire visual setup complete. Next, let's make sure your clips sound just as good as they look by setting up clean, flexible audio. Instead of recording just one audio track where everything is permanently mixed together, like in your stream output, you're going to set up OBS to save each important audio source, your mic, your game, your Discord, your music, onto its own separate audio track within the video file being recorded. But why does this matter? Well, imagine editing your clip. Your reaction was perfect, but your game sound was too loud. No problem, just lower the volume of the dedicated game audio track. Or you got an amazing highlight, but you're playing copyrighted music in the background. No problem, just mute the dedicated music track. Or you got an ace, but your friend was eating their dinner without muting their mic on Discord. No problem, just get a new friend. So this method gives you completely separate audio tracks in your editing software with that full flexibility of how you want to adjust the levels. Here's how you set it up. First, you need to prevent OBS from capturing all of your desktop sounds together. Go to OBS's audio settings. Under global audio devices, set desktop audio and desktop audio 2 to disabled and make sure that your primary microphone, the one that you actually speak into, is correctly selected in one of the mic auxiliary audio dropdowns. Next, you'll need to add the specific audio sources into your OBS scenes. Keep in mind that you will actually need to have the application open and usually playing audio for it to appear. Now, importantly, you'll want to add these audio sources to your main gaming scene, the horizontal one that you actually use to stream with, not the vertical one. Atom Vertical will still record all of these separate audio tracks as long as the sources are active and showing in OBS's audio mixer. So, in your main scene, add an application audio capture source. Name it something like music. Next, locate spotify.exe or whatever music application you're using in the window dropdown. Set the window match priority to match title, otherwise find window of same executable. This will ensure the correct program always gets found. Now you should see a new fader in OBS's audio mixer displaying the audio levels for your new music source. Again, this is completely separate from the other PC audio sources like your system sounds, game sounds, or chat applications. Now just repeat this process for every other audio source you want to capture. For example, add a source for Discord or a chat application, and maybe one for a browser if you use it to watch YouTube whilst you stream. For both your game audio and your alerts, there are simpler ways of adding your audio. Simply open up the properties for your game capture source and check the box that says capture audio. The same goes for any browser sources you are using for alerts, for example. Just open up the properties and tick control audio via OBS. You should now have a few new faders in OBS's audio mixer, each for independent control of a different audio source. Next, you need to actually 
tell OBS which track each source should be recorded to. In the audio mixer, click the cog icon for the advanced audio properties. You'll see this grid that looks like a spreadsheet, sources down the rows and tracks one to six across the columns. Leave the track one column configured for your live stream. Ensure all the sources you want your Twitch audience to hear are checked on track one. In the column for track two, we want to uncheck every box except for the one that your microphone source uses. In the column for track three, we want to uncheck every box except the one for your game capture source. In the column for track four, uncheck every box except the one that your chat or Discord source uses. In the track five column, uncheck every box except the one that your music source uses. And in the track six column, uncheck every box except the one that your browser source uses. So quickly scan through tracks two to six. Each track should ideally have just one check mark corresponding to a single audio source you want isolated to that track. Remember, track one is your stream mix, so that will have multiple sources checked. That's normal. Now OBS knows which sounds belong on which audio track. We're almost there. The final step is setting up OBS to save our clips after an awesome moment happens on stream. Find the Atom vertical dock in OBS and click the settings cog to open its configuration panel. Let's start with the backtrack settings in the general tab. This is the name that Atom chose for what is essentially just OBS's replay buffer, allowing you to save the last X minutes of your stream in vertical form. Keep the backtrack runs while streaming slash recording checked. This makes sure that it's automatically active whenever you're live. Backtrack recording length is how far back the recording saves when you hit that hotkey. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, three minutes, pick whatever works for your content. Just bear in mind that Backtrack is constantly saving this length of video to your computer's memory. So both a longer time here and a higher recording bit rate, which we'll set up in just a sec, will use more of your system's RAM. Set the Backtrack recording path to a unique folder just for these Backtrack clips to keep everything tidy. Next, set a Save Backtrack hotkey. Just choose a combination that's easy for you to press right after an awesome moment happens. This is your Clip That button. If you have a Stream Deck, you can also save this key combination as a hotkey on your Stream Deck. You don't necessarily need to add the Start and Stop hotkeys for Atom's recording since you've set Backtrack to automatically run whenever you're streaming or recording. Next, let's go to the Recording tab. If you're going to use Atom Vertical to also record longer form vertical content, you can set up some recording settings here. However, since this tutorial focuses on just saving highlights using the backtrack feature, you can scroll down to the advanced section and uncheck the use main OBS settings box. This is gonna give you full control over the quality settings right here, ensuring that your clips look exactly how you want, independent of any other OBS settings. For file name formatting, I just recommend adding vertical or clip to the end so that you know which OBS recordings these are. For recording format, I'd recommend using OBS's new hybrid MP4 format. Unlike like standard MP4, it's resilient against crashes. Unlike fragmented MP4, it works great in editors. And unlike MKV, it doesn't require any remixing. Some might say it's the perfect hybrid. Next, you'll see the audio track checkboxes. Since you set up tracks one through six earlier, make sure you check all of those boxes for the tracks you want available in your video editor. Including track one just gives us the full stream mix as a quick reference or a backup alongside your isolated tracks, which are tracks two to six. This just tells OBS to actually include all of those separate audio tracks in the final recording file. Then we can choose our encoder. For the best performance, definitely use a hardware encoder if you have one, so NVENC for NVIDIA, AMF for AMD, or QuickSync for Intel. If you have options for specific codecs like H.264, HEVC, or AV1, I'd probably recommend going with HEVC, which is H.265, for a good balance of quality, file size, and current editing software compatibility. The video bitrate setting determines the quality of your vertical clips. Since it's a local recording, just for editing, you can give it plenty of data. Really, anything between, say, 20,000 and 50,000 kilobits per second should look great. Just remember that, like the recording length, a high higher bitrate value will use more RAM for the backtrack replay buffer. So find a balance that works for your system specs. Click OK to save these settings and that's it. The configuration is done. I know that was a lot of steps, but trust me, getting this foundation right is well worth it. Before we wrap up, let's just do one quick crucial check to verify it all actually works. Start a test stream or just hit start recording in OBS for a minute or two and make sure all your usual audio sources are active. Talk into your microphone, have some game sound playing, maybe play some music or join your friends on Discord. Once that's been recording for a couple of minutes, hit that save backtrack hotkey that you just set. You should see some new messages in OBS that your backtrack recording has just been saved. Find the video file that popped into your backtrack recording folder and drag it into your favorite video editor like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. Now on the timeline, you should see your 
perfectly formatted vertical video, crispy gameplay in the center, your webcam right where you placed it, and all those important UI elements perfectly overlaid. Just as importantly, look at the audio. You should see multiple separate audio waveforms, one for each track that you configured. Try playing it back. Mute track one since that's the full mix, and now solo track two, you should only hear your microphone. Solo track three, you should only hear your game audio. Solo track four, you should only hear your Discord, etc., etc. With this foundation now in place, adding that final polish to your edit becomes so much easier. You can quickly just trim the clip to the best moment, perfectly balance the audio levels because they're separate, maybe add some engaging captions or zooms and craft something truly designed to stop the scroll. And don't forget, you can check the platform overlays don't clash with the content that you just created by using my free safe zone tool on gamingcareers.com. Congrats, OBS is now a vertical clip recording powerhouse, ready to capture high quality multi-track clips, complete with essential game UI elements overlaid all at the press of a single button. So go stream, hit that hotkey when something magic happens and you'll create amazing vertical content. Thanks for watching, peace.